Thank you for the opportunity to share some thoughts on this uh, topic. Uh, today in the education uh, conferences, uh, the hot topic today is lifelong learning and uh, why it matters more today than before. So let's reflect few things on the 21st century itself. Um, year back, we in TCS got together and said, how do we deal with this rapid changes that we see in various different industries? Um, the insurance industry may not be there after a few years, the automotive insurance industry. If the autonomous cars are going the way it is going today, we may see some drastic changes in the insurance industry. Um, if you look at manufacturing industry with 3D printing and other technologies coming in, we have to see how that industry is going to evolve for the future. So every industry is evolving rapidly. So we ask this question, what does it mean for a company like TCS, which is in the technology space, and how do we create value to our own customers? So we launched this business 4.0 framework, as we call, uh, which primarily focused on four key aspects for every industry. And this is a thought provocation framework from TCS that really focused on how do you really get into mass personalization in the industries that we are serving? You know, many years back when we talked about personalization, we talked about personalization for a segment. We talked about personalization for a K to 12 segment. We talked about personalization for a higher education segment, and so on and so forth. But it really moved on to personalization at an individual level, right? But if you actually observe today several examples, personalization has gone beyond the individual level. What does a child do in the morning versus the child does in the evening varies. And how do you interact with the child in the morning and evening has to change. So personalization at an individual level is moving from segment to group to individual to transaction today, right? Um, Amazon's deal for the same individual in the morning changes than in the evening, right? So what does it mean for various different industries? How one should look at this mass personalization itself is one dimension we have been putting enormous amount of research and thinking. The second aspect is about exponential value creation. Today, companies are looking at how can they create value, not just in single dimension, but in multiple dimensions, much beyond what their expectations are. Many tech product companies are coming up with products that drive exponential value to the students, to the learners, to the consumers at large, right? And the more important aspect about it is this exponential value creation is happening at a price point which is much, much lower than a normal segment-based value creation. So today we are saying probably there will be a scenario where the autonomous cars will be cheaper than the cars that we see today. So an exponential value creation is happening, but at the same time the price points are being brought down very, very significantly. That's the second aspect. The third one is about the ability to do it together. If I reflect on the 50 years of TCS itself, we are celebrating our 50th year this year, the company has evolved very significantly by being focused on delivery, doing it right as we say, to doing it first before anyone does it, to doing it fast, productivity and doing it much, much faster than anyone else, 
and today's world is about mm. doing it together. So, how do companies can join hands in an ecosystem? Take an example of a handloom industry, right? There is a raw material producer, maybe a silk, there is a weaver, there is a designer, there is a finished goods maker, and there is a distributor or a seller, and we are all consumers as buyers. Now, the ability for various different companies in these domains coming together in order to drive value is going to dramatically change how an industry is going to create value for the consumers. So, the third thing that we have been focusing on is to deliver an ecosystem driven value rather than an individual companies doing many things, many companies collaborating together and creating value for the consumer. And the fourth one is about embracing risk. Companies today are saying, I am willing to embrace risk and I will look forward to the return because of these characteristics of embracing risk. Now, the 21st century companies have these characteristics in it. They clearly focus on mass personalization. They look for exponential value creation at very, very low price points. They focus on an ecosystem driven business models and they embrace risk and look for the returns that it can give for them. So, the 21st century companies are changing dramatically, whether it is in the education space or otherwise, one has to accept, acknowledge and be prepared to embrace this change that we see here. Now, let us look at the learning component of it. These companies look for very different type of talent. As we say, many of the students, many of the jobs for which we are preparing the students today does not exist at all. Means we have to recognize this fact. Institutions have to recognize this fact. Teachers and professors have to adopt this change that we see in the industry itself. So, what learning, what changes that we have to bring in the learning are very different. So, in TCS, we have been asking this question. What we do in learning is, is not really a, a well known fact in the industry. We started with um, assessment as a platform. Today, we do large scale assessments in the country. Many of the educationists here will know that whether it is a JEE exam, whether it is a gate exam, whether it is a, a medical exams, all of them are running on this technology platform that we launched eight years before. And we have been asking, what is the practices, what is the set of practices that we can bring in, in the learning process itself? Let me give you a few examples to illustrate that. For a long time, we have been asking, why learn and assess? Why not we flip it to assess and learn? Now, the general model that we are all aware of is to make sure that children go to a class, learn. At the end of the month or at the end of the term, there is an assessment and they get assessed on how much score they got from the learning that they did. Now, think of flipping it, right? Children go to a term assess themselves through a large amount of analytics and intelligence, if we can tell the child or if we can tell the teacher or the parent on what are the areas where the children is doing well and what are the areas that the children lacks using a very powerful analytic solution, this learning or teaching can be more narrow, can be personalized for the child than before. It is a good example of what mass personalization can do for the child. Take another example. Now, we all know there is a large debate about um, MOOCs and uh, completion percentage, lot of discussions and debates happening in the public uh, media. Now, the fact is we all know learning by doing 
is a much better approach than learning through a digital mechanism or learning in the classroom itself. But ask this question, what we are doing about it, right? One of the thinking that we had is to introduce this term called digital learning, right? Now, digital learning has a definitive set of advantages. You want scale, you want speed, you want reach, digital definitely helps, right? Physical does not help in those areas. But physical learning has got its own set of advantages. You have an ability to understand the child better. You have an ability to make him do hands-on and understand how he does. The trick here is to integrate this physical learning with the digital learning and get the best of this, both of these worlds and create something what we call as a digital learning and integrate it. This requires ecosystem approach. I wrote an article several years back that this question of campus, campus boundaries will fade, but campus will never disappear. The role of campus can change or will change, but campus is an integral component of this digital learning itself. We cannot ignore that. So what we have been doing in the last several years has been thinking about a single uh, mechanism, an approach, a thought on how we can bring all of these things together. How do we ensure that we create communities where the best in class teachers in the country be on the cloud and teach the children? in the classroom, outside the classroom. What is the enabling mechanism that is required for doing that? How do we ensure that the industry and the academia come together, not just in conferences, but on a daily basis where the learning can happen continuously and not just in events, right? What is the technology enablement that is required to do it? How do we ensure that we do on demand live lecture, not through going through enormous amount of pain to bring in an author. We in TCS today work with various different colleges where live lectures come from a TCS office into the classroom of a higher education institution. How do we enable technology to achieve this? How do we integrate hands on? Now, all of us know, if I'm going to give a book to a student and say, read this and you will learn how to drive a car, it's not going to happen. If you're going to give a book and say, learn this book, it's available on a digital medium and you will learn how to do welding, it's not going to happen, right? There are many such trades that requires much stronger physical interventions. Why do we fail in creating powerful students out of these ITIs? Why do we fail, right? It is because of this lack of understanding of how do we integrate this physical and digital mediums. So what we said is, good welder may be in Delhi or in Chennai, a student who is learning welding may be, in, may be in Manipur, but if we can bring both of them together where he does welding and the assessment happens in Chennai because this entire welding happens on a camera, say for example. And then we bring in interventions to him on what he should do. We have been working on a number of simulators within the company to make sure that, I am not sure whether some of you would have heard, if you Google Velu the welder, you will know it's a work out of our research labs in Chennai in order to teach welding without actual welding machine, right? It is attached to a computer, there is a rod, and it simulates actually how the child can learn welding itself, right? Now we have focused a lot on 
handloom industry we are focusing a lot on agriculture right how do we teach children in that space or or students in that space itself so the method is to build hands on and see from a digital medium to a physical medium how do you travel all the way to a physical medium to teach children itself many other methods can be put together a debate for children to participate i'm sure all of you will accept that when children are in a classroom in a group the peer group learns much better than your teacher to a student relationship the teacher to a student relationship is important it has to do the job of provocation and then the students can learn from each other now we are focused more on how do you do group assignments how do you bring children together in a group and asking them to do assignments in a digital medium how do you ensure that we set up debates how do we ensure that we create the enthusiasm for children to do blogs how do we ensure that when there is a question the children gets up and goes and answers some other children to answer or some other children's question itself these mechanisms what we call as learning interventions has got a huge potential and that brings us to the topic of how do we make these things lifelong one of the questions that we asked a few years back is there an opportunity for us to teach the child in the womb how do we communicate with the child in the womb few weeks back there was a question in one of the conferences that one of them asked me is is tcs keen to look at adults who have completed their work life because one of the biggest challenges in countries like japan and uh, and singapore is the aging population and how do you deal with that we believe there is an opportunity to truly make this learning or education lifelong from the womb to adults who are going through a retired life itself and i believe in order to do that we have to bring in different set of constructs the construct could be an assessment based learning the construct could be a live chat the construct could be a video based learning the construct could be a community based learning the construct could be a, a provocation or a debate being set up for the children at large so today we in tcs have evolved more than 30 different learning interventions that can be brought together on a single umbrella by which educationists like you can innovate which tool in which context in which scenario for which child can be administered not just in a static fashion but on a continuous dynamic fashion and that's the approach that we have taken we believe this opens up a very new large opportunity for personalizing for creating exponential value for building working with a large number of ecosystem players and also take very calculative risk and look for returns in this industry thank you very much for the opportunity to share your thoughts